Okay, um, yeah. So as Chris mentioned, I'm going to be talking about CSS shapes and why you should be excited about CSS shapes. So long ago, the web looked like this. This is the Disneyland website from, I think, I don't know, the 90s. And you can see, you know, the, the navigation. If you, if you ignore the garish colors, right, you're only like, hey, okay, the navigation sort of like can, it curves around. Then we have things like, okay, the Playboy, the old Playboy website. <laughs> and the navigation is like, oh, okay, circles. Like circles were very in, in the 90s. There's the Space Jam website. This one is still live, by the way. So if you, it's really live. So if you Google it, you can still find it. They never did take it down. And yes, but as we got, so this, this was, this, this was, during the time where people did their layouts using the table method, you know. Then after a while, you know, we had floats. Now most of our sites look like this. This is the latest ESPN website got redesigned like last year. Um, if you play a lot of video games, this is GameSpot, IGN, obviously the gamer users, gamer websites. So if you notice, there's a pattern here. So it's a lot of variations of stacked rectangles. So, like recently, there have been a few articles that have been floating around, like web designer news and stuff. I, I think the title goes along, like, web design is boring, you know. Um, some of you may have read that. And I don't entirely agree with the guy, but it's also hard to disagree with it. I mean, there's only so many ways you can stack rectangles, right? It's like, okay, mm up, down, left, right, numbers. But, so... I work, at a, I work at an advertising agency, so we don't only do digital. Um, I, there are a lot of our designers who do print design. And um, in print design, they have a lot of flexibility to, to in, in their designs because they're not restricted in, in terms of the canvas. So because they do um, banners and posters and things like that, sometimes they are called to design for the web also. Um, we can talk, that, that, that can be a whole topic on its own. But they are actually very, they are very creative people, and there are a lot of de print design principles that they 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 do try to bring into their web designs. Um, the problem with that is that a lot of them are not used to designing for the web, and they are not very familiar with the constraints that we face. So, layout design is a very integral part of print design, and some of my designers will will, will give me designs that actually look really good, but very a lot of times I do tell them, sorry, I can't do it. So like, for example, like some, some magazine layouts, right? You can see like the carbon connection. There's meaning behind this. They do, they do the, like the carbon molecule design, and then they let the words wrap around the, the, the carbon molecule. There's the, the one for the diamond thing. Similarly, they just like wrap. It, it's sort of, there's a reason why they do it that way. It's to, it's to catch your eye, bring you there, and then you, can s then you start reading the text. And um, these, are, these are just normal magazines, especially if you look at fashion magazines. There are a lot of models, live models, and they're always posed, and they always like to make the text flow around the, flow around the model. And when my designers give me designs that, that follow this, this design pattern, I have to tell them, sorry. I cannot make the text wrap around Beyonce's elbow. It's rectangles for you. But, but with CSS shapes, right, the text can wrap around Beyonce's elbow. So this is um, what CSS shapes can do. So before we begin, uh, very, very, very quickly, uh, I'm Hui Jing. I'm a self-taught designer and developer. Somehow managed to get a job at an agency. That's that's essentially my life summed up in emojis. You can, talk, you can ask me about it later. And sometimes I also write blog posts. So anyway, the point of the talk today is I'm going to talk about CSS shapes level one. Okay, why, why, why level one? Um, the full spec is um, what I originally wanted to cover a bit more, but um, due to some technical restraints, they sort of split out, split out into two. So, CSS shapes level one basically covers the shape outside CSS property. So in future level of CSS shapes, it will actually allow the use of shapes on elements other than floats, 
Right now, in order to use CSS shapes, you have to float the element which you want the text to wrap around. So um, the spec defines it as CSS shapes outside. It defines the float area for inline content to wrap around the shape instead of the floats bounding box. So this phrase bounding box, to get to know that a bit more, we need to talk about the box model. So this should be familiar if you use the dev tools. Like if you use Chrome Dev Tools and you like scroll down, there's this, this, di this very nice diagram. I actually chose the same color so it looks familiar. That it will show you the box, how the box model works on your elements. So basically, it starts with the content, then padding, then border, then margin. So this is the box model. Um, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about the box model. But the point is, um, when you use CSS shapes, the box model does not change. What do I mean? It means that. The shape is still clipped to the margin box. So imagine like the box, right? Your CSS shape will only go reduce the float area. You, you cannot expand from the original bounding box. And also for, for now, a limitation is that wrapping only occurs on one side. So basically, if you float your element left, um, your text will wrap on the right and vice versa. You float to the right, your text will wrap on the left. Um, you, without hacking it, you cannot make it like flow around. For now, for now. Hopefully, in the future levels, we'll be able to do that. So, first off, there are four basic shape functions. So this is actually very similar to like clip the clip path property as well. So we have the circle function, ellipse, inset, and polygon. So circle and ellipse very close to each other. So the circle function basically you can make the, your text wrap around in a circle. And the syntax is shape outside circle. And as, as long as you float it, it works. So the basic syntax is it takes the, is circle, and then inside it takes two arguments, which is the shape radius and the position. So by default, it's the, cen it's the center of the circle. So go back. Uh, up. But you can change the origin point to anywhere as well. So that's pretty straightforward. We also have the ellipse function, which is basic ellipse is basically just a squashed circle anyway. So it takes two arguments. So the shape radius takes so you can define along the x and the y axis. So that's how you like define the ellipse. So it's very, very similar to the circle. Then we also have an inset function, which allows you to wrap around borders. So normally, if we don't have this, it will be it will not it will not wrap around the border radius, the round corners. So how the syntax works is that it follows when we define margin. So it's like top right, bottom left, and the shorthand also follows that. So there are various permutations you can use for the shorthand, or you can define everything, and then there's the border radius. So the inset is applied from the edge of the element inward. So meaning the more is, is from outside in. Um, later, I'll show you a diagram. It'll, it'll, it'll make more sense later. Lastly, we have the polygon function. So the polygon function, is you can see, it actually follows the exact syntax as clip path to define uh, the shapes. So what you have is, this is how it works. You have polygon. And then the fill rule is an optional uh, value. But the point is, the sh it, you need to create your polygon using clip path. So for mine, my um, triangle is very easy because it's very straightforward. But with the polygon function, you can actually create a lot of complex shapes. And to actually plot these points, because each, each coordinate pair defines a point. So that's why you, you can actually define as many points as you want, but it's, it's quite painful to do it by hand. So there's this tool called uh, it's a Chrome extension called CSS Shapes Editor that you can sort. It, it will add a shapes uh, tab to your dev tools, and you can actually use that tool to sort of plot your points. Um, it's a Chrome extension, so you can actually go and download and try it out. Um, for polygon function, at least three points required because anything less than three points is not a polygon; it's a line. So yeah. So lastly, then you can use like the Beyonce example is you use an image with alpha properties. So if you notice the syntax, there's shape outside, which you 
defi you, you, you point it to your alpha image, and then there's a, this property called shape image threshold. Basically, this is like the opacity of your image. And you can use this to control how, how much you, you, you want the shape to wrap. So it, it also depends on how you process your image before you're ready for it. And then shape margin basically is the margin between the, the sh your defined shape and your text. So you can actually increase or decrease it. And as usual, you need a float for it to work. So as you can see, the shape margin is the orange part. So the purple part is, is essentially my PNG because I set my shape threshold to 0 0.5. So it's from 0, which is transparent, and 1, which is opaque. So your text will just flow outside the shape margin. So you can actually increase the shape margin if, you, if, if need be. So, OK, basically, the support for CSS shapes is not spectacular. It's only supported on WebKit browsers like Chrome and Safari. It's under consideration in Edge already. Firefox doesn't have it yet. But there's a very good polyfill that's w that was developed by the Adobe Web Platform team. Uh, I think it supports all the way back to IE8, if I'm not wrong. So actually, it's safe, it's safe to use if you, you, your designer gives you like fantastically wrapped text or you can you, you, you don't have to tell them no anymore you can say yes yes I can do that I can even do that on IE8 oh excellent so to find out more um, the spec is actually very readable it's it's written in readable human English so you can try to read the spec um, there's also a very good articles by Razvan Taliban, he's the guy who actually wrote the CSS Shapes ex Chrome extension. So he, he's part of the Adobe web platform team also. And he there's this really, really nice demo. Uh, he did it for uh, Alice in Wonderland, where the, he sort of makes, it's, it's like a storytelling site that makes use of CSS Shapes to, it really looks like a kid's storybook. And the layout is really built using CSS Shapes. And there's also, Two very good articles by Sarah Suedan um, that goes in depth into how 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 CSS shapes work and and how you can use CSS shapes to create like non rectangular layouts. Um, so like I mentioned before, there's a CSS shapes module level two which will define a shape inside property. So right now the shape the the text can only flow outside the shape. You technically can't make your text like flow inside, a circu uh, inside any shape yet. So the CSS shapes module level 2 are go is going to give a shape inside property that allows us to put content inside a shape. And there's also a CSS exclusions property. Basically what it does is, it's similar to CSS shapes right now as it, where the content will flow outside, but it, you don't have to float it around an actual element. So you can sort of like define an empty circle in the middle of your text, and the text will just flow around it. That's why it's called exclusions, but also not here yet, but hopefully coming soon. So yeah, that's it. Right on time. Any questions, everybody? <laughs> Nobody's asking questions. Excellent. <laughs> I was going to ask about browser support, but then you, you said polyfills. The polyfill works. So I was if wondering if you're allowed to mention JavaScript at a CSS event, but we'll let it pass. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm using script later on. You so can give me a what? You can give me a warning later. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> yep. Do you know how the polyfill works? I'm just curious. Mm. I I will get back to you on that. <laughs> For now, I know that I've tested it and it works, but I will get back to you on that. Is it very big the polyfill? I'm not. Really, I I'm, I'm frightened of polyfills because the polyfill for this, polyfill for that, it kind of adds up. Mm. But CSS shapes are so brilliant. If we can actually, I think the biggest thing we can do is actually tell designers that you can do shapes now. Yeah. Because um, anytime you hand something to a designer, they're just going to sit there and say, oh no. But yeah, you, and when a designer turns up and you find it's really hard to code and play paging. Sorry, <laughs> sorry guys. Uh, the shape's polyfill is 32 kb in the fight. From what I see on the Yeah, mm. that's nasty. 
but that's why we want it in the spec. Yeah. Yeah, and with evergreen browsers, uh, the rate things are going. You'll be surprised. I think a lot of people don't know this about Edge, but Edge is actually very fast, very good in terms of they are looking at a lot of these specs and they're trying to implement it because now Edge is going to be an evergreen browser and they're actually one of the browsers that are implementing the newer specs like quite, uh, they're quite actively looking into implementing these new specs. But that's why now you hear people say Safari is the new IE. Okay, it's not IE anymore people, it's Safari. Just saying. <laughs> yeah, I disagree with that. <laughs> Okay. If my, my counter to that is that you don't remember how bad IE was. <laughs> <laughs> I used Netscape Navigator, okay, uh, long ago. Netscape four. Yeah, when I wasn't when I wasn't my full height, I used Netscape Navigator. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna hand off to Zell now. Oh, do you want me to go in the middle? I'll go. Oh, next. okay. Go right. oh, okay. Yeah.